What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with a pretty amazing person named Allie Covington. Allie, how are you? I'm doing great. It's an honor to have you here today. So you guys, let me give you- It's an uh, honor to Allie's be here. Bio. It's a blessing to have you. Um, <laughs> so Allie and I met on Twitter as I meet a lot of uh, fitness influencers and personalities. And um, she fascinated me, a lot of the stuff that she writes about. But now I've come to find out that she also is- very successful entrepreneur, a software writer. She's actually wrote her own training software, uh, which is not licensed to anyone yet. So if you're watching the show and you're very impressed by her, you should probably reach out to her. Uh, and she's also a recent mother. In fact, her son is literally in the background. He just woke up from his nap. So as I told her before the show, this is the first time for me to do this, something like this. So it's awesome. So if there is a baby that she has to pick up and attend to in the podcast, <laughs> cut her some slack. So Allie, as I always do Thank on the you. podcast, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, you know, how did Allie Covington get here on the Jay Campbell podcast today? Uh, I guess I said something interesting enough for you to get, <laughs> for, to get your attention. Huh? I don't even bit. know what it was when we go back, but. No, you, I, I, you sent me a couple of tweets about light and love. And, you know, I realized that you um, were a very high conscious yeah. person. And I was like, Allie, I want you to come on. I think that's what connected us. Yeah. yeah. 100 percent it's 100 percent high vibration people mm -hmm. yes and you are very very high vibration so you know we you and i don't have any topics because we're going to free flow this but let me just ask you um you know today is december 9th 2020 everybody essentially for the most part wants to see 2021 be here tomorrow um where are we right now, you know, as a person who's an entrepreneur, a successful personal trainer who does virtual work, who's written virtual software for this, you know, how has the COVID crisis, debacle, scamdemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, how has it affected you in your personal life and obviously your business world? My personal life didn't change all that much because I worked from home to begin with, with my son. I have two older kids that still go to school through hybrid learning. So they do a little at home, a little at school. And um, it did slow down my running around town like a crazy chicken. Yep. So everything kind of came way more in-house. I was doing all the therapies for my son. He has epilepsy. And so he has two hours of physical therapy, two hours of occupational therapy, two hours of speech therapy a week. And so with COVID, because all of the clinics were shut down, I was the one doing all of the therapies, which was a blessing because it really raised my awareness of tiny cues and my ability to administer and be the therapist really like it went from like a i think i can kind of do a little here at home to a 10 right so i went from a two to a 10 
in a matter of weeks, um, stepping up into that role for him was really, really beautiful. Uh, but it raised my consciousness with him and the vibration of my entire household so much because now instead of being distracted by the schedule and running him all around town and doing this and doing that, I was able to get grounded and get into that mode of being the person and noticing the nuance and the small cues and the things that he really needed from me in therapy sessions and outside of therapy sessions. And so I became his, his person, his everything in that moment. It also helped change my, my business. So while my financial business couldn't continue to move forward in any real meaningful way, when you can't meet with people, I, my, my training platform, my software really started to take off because where people could go to the gym and meet sure. with a trainer, now they couldn't. And, now, and at the same time that they weren't allowed to go, they couldn't access a trainer or a gym or anything like that, they got, it got shoved in their face more than ever, how important it really is right. to be fit and healthy from the get go, yeah. because it protects you against right. viruses and things like that. The recovery rate of healthy people is something well over 99%. But if you, if you have issues that are related to diet and exercise or lack thereof, right. <laughs> really, right. if you had issues related to that, like diabetes and obesity and heart disease and so on, you were at a much higher risk during this pandemic. And so it really, it, there's a third, COVID became a third party validation to yeah. everything that I stood, I've stood for, for decades, yeah. that you have to take care of yourself from you know every single day, regardless of the conditions, so that you can be prepared, not just to be a healthy person, but to be able to step up for your family and your kids when they need it. So it's been um, really great for me. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you have a very calm, soothing sense about you. I'm obviously you you. Know, extremely energetic and high vibrational like you, but when mm -hmm. I listen to people you know, it's like attracts like, right? So it's like the whole vibrational mechanism right now. Of like when you're talking to me, you're right here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, you're bringing my energy even down to like cue with you. And so we're kind of really in sync right now to, to all of the, the great things that you said. Um, I love how you said, you know, it just, it resonated like your lifestyle, like it brought it to the forefront because you're right. I mean, you know, people <clears throat> that have not been taking care of themselves have had a significant dark night of the soul this entire year, right? Because if they're not yeah. affected by it, they're worried about potentially being affected by it. So it's created, and I want your you know, opinion on this, it's created this like line in the sand, as I call it, where the people that are like me and you, right? And this is our lifestyle. We take care of ourselves. We're not, we're not inflamed. We're not comorbid. We eat clean, we train effectively, you know, we do a combination of cardiovascular and resistance, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You know, we have zero fear, right? Like we're right. like, hey, you know, zero. Life is about living, right? But the other yeah. side of the people that have not taken care of themselves, and I and I obviously mm -hmm. I don't say this in judgment, I say this as a point of fact, who well, are they dismissed it. Yeah, they exactly. dismissed but the importance of it as though, well, I can do it tomorrow, or well. I'm only in my thirties or forties right. or well, I've right. got it controlled with medication. <laughs> right. That's my, well, that's my favorite one. Oh, my diabetes is controlled. Well, Sparky, I don't think that worked out for you so controlled. well this time. Huh? Right. My diabetes yeah. is genetic. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, to yeah. finish, I, I was literally going to, you know, set you up. I, they're in fear though. Right. And so when you're fully so at this fear, point, when, yeah, when you're in fear, you know, the law of attraction, quantum physics, whatever you want to call it, the yeah. vibratory patterns, the attractor thing. patterns. Yeah. That's what you bring mm -hmm. into your life. That's right. That's right. And so because they're afraid of it and rightfully so, and they've been watching the media tell them to be afraid of it. The same people that told them that it was okay to just go take a pill instead right. of get their diet in line to go, have a surgery instead of get their body, you know, physically capable. They're the same ones that are telling them they need to be afraid of this. It's and amazing. it's amazing. It's like, I feel like I've been sitting on top of a mountain, just watching the show right. this whole time going, 
So when are you guys going to wake up and right. realize that the same people that said that this is okay are now telling you that it's exactly. not okay and you should be afraid by it. They're pulling your strings. It's master it's puppetry of the matrix. But you know, to something yeah. else you said, um, people are not proactive. You know, the reactive people, which again are in fear, at, you know, as you said, watching the popular media, I'll tell you what has happened that's benefited you and I and people like us, you know, in the alternative healthcare space, however you define us. Um, the people that are proactive, the people that are, you know, reaching and are like, Ali, they've seen, you know, the clinical space, you know, what I call the sick care system, it's completely mm -hmm. collapsed and crumbled in the last six months. It's gone. No, I mean, most people, even if that's the, the world they live in, you know, where it's like, oh, I can only afford a $40 copay. They won't even go to the doctors now because they're so in fear of being in a yeah. doctor's office around COVID. Well, what's the, how do you get somebody to change? How do you get them to change? You drop how do you get somebody to change? <laughs> <laughs> well, COVID just dropped them off the bridge. Exactly. So they have been pushed so far that yeah. now the pendulum is swinging back in the other direction. Yeah. And I'm getting over 150 leads a day of people asking for personal training That's all awesome. across the country. All across the country. I can't get to all of them. I have to have a way of filtering them out. And those are, the, those are after the filters. Sure, sure. And I have, I have to further filter them out. Like who's going to be, who's the most ready right now? Who's the most intense? Right. Who's, right. you know, and who do I get a vibe from when I sure. see their, their lead sure. come up? But um, people have, uh, they're, they're starting to wake up, I think, to the need to be self-sufficient in their own health and wellness. And those that aren't, we're never going to anyway. Right. There's a certain percentage of people that won't ever get healthy. They just have no desire. Okay. Right. Then, then the system is for you. But there's right. a whole lot of people right there in the middle that, that just didn't get it. They yeah. got the wrong memo. Right. You know what I mean? And now they're realizing that they need to take control of it for themselves. And they're, they are out searching. They're out looking. They want a trainer. They're realizing what their downfalls are. And they're going to stop putting it on the back burner because because COVID is in their face. Beautiful. I, I, there's going to be probably some starving, struggling trainers that watch the show. They're going to be like, can you send me some of those leads, Allie? <laughs> Could. <laughs> I absolutely uh, we'll keep could. that for after, but something you just said resonated and it's a hundred percent true. And it's going to go into the consciousness, which, cause you know, you know, you and I are going to talk about that. You talked about people are waking up. Well, hello, literally right now, this planet, you know, in about two weeks we have the solstice and then we have this giant conjunction that hasn't happened in like 900 years or it's 880 years or whatever it is. And Dude, I know you know people too, right? Like people in our family, friends, relatives, people are literally waking up and they're reaching out to people like us who are, you know, a little bit more advanced consciously. And they're like, what am I, why do I think this? Or can you explain this to me? I mean, it's incredible. So yes, you're right. A lot of people who never thought about exercise or never thought about adjusting their diet or just living a cleaner lifestyle are all of a sudden like, damn, dude, this is the dark night of the soul. This is like, if I don't get myself fixed and, you know, pull myself up by the bootstraps, I'm toast. Exactly. And you know what I find really interesting is because in California, we went back down into lockdown and most of the gyms are back closed sure. again for a third time. Not in and Marietta. I train <laughs> every morning without a mask and my gym owner is like, what's up, Jay? I'm like, what's up, George? It's amazing. Well, you know what's my my gym is considered essential. I'm not exactly sure how they got classified that way. Maybe it's because they have a med spa inside or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. But um, but they're open. But all the equipment's outside. And I got to tell you, it's not a hot, it's not a horrible thing to be outside in the sun and seventy yeah, degrees. Training in the you know light breeze. You know training and totally. and then hop in the pool. It's been really quite a blessing. But um, but I did work hard to get to be here, so <laughs> I'll take I'll take a little bit of the credit for that. I got but what's you. interesting about it is I just got off the phone with a woman who's looking for a trainer, and she's she's like I, I don't want to go to the gym. I want to train at home. So you want to invite a stranger into your home three times a week? Yep. No, they don't want that. Right. She's like, well, do you do Zoom calls? I could do a Zoom call with you, sure. But I have I have a high degree of confidence that after one workout on my software platform, you'll see you can handle it yourself Yeah, because of the way I created it. That's totally awesome. 
very, it's very been awesome. really, really fun. I thought of this 10 years ago. That's what's so crazy to me. And the industry and the world wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Without COVID, people would not have thought that remote training would work, that it would be preferred over in person. Right. And, um, and there's a lot of companies, ba- big names in, the, in companies and a lot of trainers that still haven't quite grasped how much freedom there is in, yeah. in remote training. Yeah. And, and efficiency and accuracy. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, look, um, my, you know, my, I don't, I, you know, I coach people, but I don't really train them. Like the people that I work with are a little bit more advanced. You know, they usually already have that. I'm talking to them about like consciousness and, you know, putting their families and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But there's every now and then I get guys that are like, you know, high level bodybuilders or, you know, high level performance athletes. And they're like, look, dude, you know, you're the guy, you know, how, you know, how can I control and, and, and improve, you know, these parameters where I'm at right here? How can I go from here to here? So I work with those guys every now and then, but like, it's pretty amazing. Like the expectation level now of people that are totally cool with like working with people that know their shit, right? Like if they know, you know, your shit, you, me, people like us, you know, they're, perfectly willing and able to slap down, you know, whatever it is you're going to charge them. I mean, it's kind of bizarre, you know, that, you know, we look outside right now, right. And we see like the retail world is collapsing, right. All brick and mortar mm-hmm. establishments. And, and sadly, a lot of them, it's unfortunate, right. Cause it's bullshit shutdowns. Don't let me, don't get me yeah. going like Gavin Newsom. Right. But like restaurants, <laughs> yeah. all these small businesses are being shut down and people like us that, you know, sell services, you know, online, both digital and, you know, tangible um, are crushing. And then, so it's like, I feel mm-hmm. bad for some of these people, but Hey, it's a new world. It's a new earth change. Adapt. It was like headed this way anyway. Right. It's been heading this direction. Right. 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 It just got a swift kick in the ass. That's all. Yeah. 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 And it's been really, really great because people really did need to wake up. Exactly. But I mean, look, you adjusted, you, like you said at the beginning of this show, you know, you said, you know, I was in financial services and it went away. And so I adapted and I evolved and, you know, I'm doing even more. And I, you know, I always tell people that like my wife has a line that 2020 is the adapt and pivot year, right? Mm-hmm. And every yeah. one of us had to, in some form or fashion, deal with whatever it is. You know, some people, mm-hmm. they just had to deal with death. They had to deal with people in their families dying, you know, out of fear, I did. whatever. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. My dad passed away in July. Wow, I I'm still sorry. haven't seen, I still haven't seen him or his ashes or my stepmom. Where's your, where's your dad? Is he in California or no? Yeah. He, wow. He, he was when he left his body. Yeah. Where was he around yeah. here or was he Northern California or where? No, he's he, in Pasadena. Wow. Yeah. Did he die of COVID? Yeah, so I understand. No. Just no, not. it wasn't anything related to COVID, but it was a heart condition that uh-huh. needed to get taken care of. So when we first got lifted out of the lockdown in, in June, he went to go take care of his heart and never came out of the hospital. I'm really sorry. But none of us were allowed in. You know, we weren't allowed to see him beforehand because of COVID, not allowed to go into the hospital. None of that. I mean, and he couldn't call, he couldn't FaceTime. How they old put him was on a respirator. 74. So was he in poor health? Well, he's actually my inspiration for building my software because at the age of 50, he had a double bypass. So he had high cholesterol, he had heart disease, and then he got himself to do diabetes and gout and all kinds of things. And he would never listen to me about how to eat differently or what supplements to take to help any of that condition. It was he was a chemistry teacher, so his attitude was better living through chemistry. So, you know, I'm sorry my dad's gone, but he did me a great service by being well, exactly who he was. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry for your loss, but obviously your spirit will live on in him and is living on in him. Um, I apologize. My dog is barking in the background. I have no idea why my daughter didn't put him in the backyard, but uh, he's, he's- You can't hear the toys that are going off in the background with me. <laughs> I can't hear your toys, but if you can't hear my pit bull, you know, going. I did. It's totally fine. It's life. (laughs) We don't live in a vacuum. This is real world here. No, we don't. Exactly. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. (laughs) So I love love that everything is shifting. I love that there's an upheaval. There needed to be. 
There really needs to be, but there's going to be tremendous growth and expansion that comes from this. Yeah. So many people's lives are going to be better off when, when they adapt to this change and they're going to look back and realize, wow, that was the best thing that happened to me. But sometimes it, you know, change is uncomfortable in the beginning. You yeah. usually have to have a lot of pain and pressure before you really shift. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I could say that, I mean, that's, you know, that's going to be a clip that's going to go on social media. I mean, the, re the reality of life is until you get to a point where you struggle and, you know, go through that contrast, such as your father dying, you know, a lot of people have dark moments of the soul, they attempt suicide, whatever it is, you will never truly grow as a soul until you do, you know, reach that depth of despair, that struggle and recognize, as you already said, that the struggle is the gift. Oh, sure. It's the contrast. Yes. It's the contrast. We asked for it. Right? And then we go, well, but no, I wouldn't ask to be in this horrible situation. I wouldn't ask to feel this way. But you did. And that's why it's here. Yeah. Because you wanted it. Yeah. You wanted it. Because without the contrast, you can't be clear on what you really, really want. Right. That's true. Contrast but so many people beautiful. probably never realize that. So many people, they always choose the snooze button, they get the easy button, they don't change, they don't want to adapt, they just want to just stay in their little comfort bubble or zone and they never truly awaken. You know, they, I mean, that's really what it is. It's like, they, you know, they, they, they stay in a cocoon. And, and who you know, knows how long they stay in the cocoon for? Life after life. It, you said something interesting there because as, as you were saying that, I was thinking to myself, when did I figure out that that's not the way to be, right. that the easiest path is the one that looks the hardest, the one of self-discipline, right. of measurement, of clarity, of doing the things that other people are unwilling to do, the, the road less traveled, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that I ever read that, but, <laughs> um, and I don't, I think, it, I, I think I was high school. I, I don't know, I've always had, I've always been very open to receiving information. And so I guess it just was, receiving information that's how i built my software i was in the pool i received the information everything about it and i went to work that's totally awesome i mean it's an intuitive gift you know i always talk about that that your intuition is the connection to divine source god energy so, and frequency totally. in the universe and if you don't you know understand that that's on you you haven't got you haven't evolved to that level to be of that awareness but you can never go against your intuition you know i've learned right. the hard way that when you don't listen to your intuition, it takes you down, you know, some sp different paths. But again, if we're looking at life as everything is a gift, every experience is to be learned from, to be observed, yeah. and to recognize that it was something that was, you know, to build you, to build your, you know, fortitude, whatever it was, but to, you know, to essentially, as I always say, to evolve your soul, right. um, then you're just not looking at life you know, in the wrong way. And I, I wanted to say to what, you know, what you said, like, you know, I've been walking the quote unquote seekers path since I was six years old and I ran out of the back of Catholic church and my dad chased me. He's like, where are you going? I'm like, not here. Right. I was six. Oh, years old. yes. I understand that one. I was six I... years old. Right. But it wasn't yeah. until I truly hit rock bottom at 41. Um, when my kids were kidnapped from me, my ex put me in jail I lost pretty much everything that I recognized that like, okay, dude, you know, you're not, you, your shit stinks and it's time to correct yourself. It's time to like really go within to go beyond. I understand that. Um, it, I, I really understand that when I was eight or nine, my mom used to, I was so intuitive that my mom would come to me for advice wow. about her, about lifestyle things. And I would just talk and I didn't realize what that was at that time. I just, you know, always received that kind of information, but you, you second guess it yeah. so easy to second guess it. And so here I am at, you know, life fell apart in 2018 for me. So at 42, it's a very similar story. And then that was like the, the tipping point to realize how much, how powerful I am in terms of my ability to create and and, uh, and really receive that information and put it into practice. I stopped second guessing myself That's when awesome. I hit bottom. Do you, um, Sounds like you did too. Are you okay to share your story or is that not for? Sure. Okay. Oh so yeah, how did sure. you hit? How did Allie Covington hit bottom? I want to hear this. 
So I was, I was divorced from my ex-husband for, with my older two kids in that we, we split up in 2014 and divorced a year later in 2015. And so I had moved on in 2017 to a new relationship and it was somebody that my kids and I knew it was, he was a friend and, um, and had been around all my other business partners. So kind of well vetted, I thought. And so we started dating and I thought that was a good choice at the time. And, um, and everything was well in the beginning. And then we decided like, okay, if we're going to do this, we're going to really do this. And we started moving forward, talking about having more kids and the family. And that's how I had my youngest one. And then after I was pregnant, everything kind of shifted. My ex-husband got weird. And so he started twisting around my son's mind a bit and making him, you know, think ill of me and not want to live with me. And so I started like needing to take some action legally to protect my children. And then my, my then relationship, my boyfriend at the time, eventually right after our son was born, he started getting abusive in my third trimester. And then two months after he was born, he really went to town on me a couple of times. And um, I knew that that's where it was, it was either going to end up in him doing that, or he was going to completely back off and our relationship was going to go back to being good. It was one or the other, there wasn't going to be any middle ground. But either way, I knew what I had to do, right? Source told me what I had to do. Right. And I just kept going forward, kept being who I am, kept protecting my children. And the second time he beat me, he left enough physical evidence that I could call the police, get a restraining order and get him out. And that's what happened. October 18th, 2018. Wow. Called the police. That was the scariest thing I ever had to do because I had to face him and I knew how angry he was and I knew how angry he would be that I called the police on him. Right. But I got away to go to the gym and I called the police instead of going into the gym and they went and arrested him. I had no idea if they would believe me. You know, you, you're, you, you, it's, it's a, it's a very surreal experience mm-hmm. yeah. to be abused and to see, and I could see the psychological way that he was manipulating me, but there was nothing I could do about it mm-hmm. until it hit the crescendo and then dissipated because I got a restraining order. And so I have custody of our son. He gets visitations. And my old two kids love the hell out of him. So we're just rebuilding our family. And I, I eventually got my kids back. <laughs> it's a much more, it's a, it's a much hard story than I'm, I mean, I'm leaving out like, like some gory details, I'm not sure. because I'm unwilling to go into it, but because right. I don't think we have the time yeah, to no. get into it. And I wouldn't no. want to dive in and not do it justice, but suffice it to say, um, January of this year, is when everything got settled. We, st- we started putting our life back together. And so COVID was actually really great for that, by the way, because the pools were shut down, the gyms were shut down. So I took my kids to the beach wow. and we had a blast. I got a babysitter for the little one and I, ta- I showed them how to you know, body surf and body board and got my kids from I, I'm too afraid to go in the water to my son going, okay, I don't know whether I want to be a skier or a surfer. I'm like, wait, what? You, you wouldn't even put your toe in the water. Uh, in March and in August, he's like duck diving and having a blast and jumping on top. Like they mastered it in, in so a awesome. period of time. Like really, really mastered it. And their confidence shot up as a result of it. Their confidence shot up there. Our family became super tight. And um, so that's, that part has been a blessing, but yeah, that story, you hit rock bottom, you lose everything, absolutely everything. And then you rebuild, but you realize that you can, like I stopped second guessing myself at that point. I think the reason, I think the only way he got in that door and was able to do what he was able to do was because I gave him the benefit of the doubt, even though I saw red flags along the way. And I said, no, nah, it'll be okay. No, nah, it'll be okay. I must be overreacting. Right. I don't do that anymore. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial. 
for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I have a very similar story. Uh, but it would be the opposite, essentially. And, you know, my story was not that, but that's what I was accused of. And, you know, my ex had a boyfriend and it's you're getting your children back. My, my children were estranged or taken from me for 18 months. Um, that, was, that was the lowest 18 months of my life, not having my two daughters and able to protect them and be there in their life and be their dad and all that stuff. But so I, me too. Mine was 19 months. I identify. Yeah. So the, so the universe brought us together because again, like-minded souls, we've had, we shared similar experiences, but again, yeah. I'm, I'm very, you know, from my heart to yours. Um, I'm very thankful that you shared that story because I thought it was profound. Uh, mm-hmm. and you have a lot of courage. If I can ask you other questions, are you guys now? Sure amicable oh well we talk through talking parents and you know just communicate around visitations i am not in an emotional place where i want to have any kind of any anything more than that any any contact more than that he tries to be very friendly and i am cordial right i'm matter of fact and cordial i am not demonstrating that i have any emotional interest in because if i give him an inch he'll try to pry the door open right. and that's not going to ever happen I got you. so it's it's fine but there's no co-parenting going on i parent i have right. sole custody legal and physical and there's nothing for me to talk about with him which is exactly how i need it to be if i had to uh, back in december i had to hear his voice while he was learning from uh, my son's physical therapist kind of how to work with him uh, to keep him safe from having another seizure w- during his visits. And just listening to his voice caused a full-blown PTSD wow. reaction in my body. And I went, I can't, I can't right. do that. Right. Just stay away. <laughs> right. Stay away completely. Right. The further away you are, the better off I am, the better my energy, my vibration's high. But as soon as there gets to be just a little too much interaction, it's like, yeah. and I catch it and go, okay. We're yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's beautiful. I mean, again, uh, you're, you're a very powerful woman, um, you know, to be able to raise, you know, three children on your own by yourself, um, you know, with the specter of that in the background. I mean, I salute you. Uh, you know, I'm really glad that you came on the podcast today and shared that story. Um, you know, my story, I've shared my story before. I won't go into my details, but I can just assure you that there are many men and women just similar to ourselves who've shared very similar stories and it's amazing like you said you were 42 you know i was 41 um it's it's kind of like the you know like you said it's the trials and tribulations it's the it's the breakdown that leads to the breakthrough and you're clearly in a different place now and energetically you are very very powerful like i i mean i it's weird right because um, I'll just share a second with my, my, my ex's, I mean, my current wife's story with hers ex and what mm-hmm. she went through, like you guys are both totally different women now than mm-hmm. where you were, you know, pre previous to these things happening because the Allie Covington that I'm talking to right now could never be that person that she was before, but that's part Correct. of your soul evolution, not mm-hmm. second guessing yourself, right? Like becoming yeah. this empowered, powerful divine feminine woman. And my wife went through the same thing um, with her ex and what all she went through. And she, I mean, she lost everything. She gave everything to him. She, she did not have the courage to walk. Like literally it took every ounce and he wasn't beating her, thank God, but like it was, you know, emotional abuse. I mean, it was everything she could do, Allie, to walk away. And when she did, she did everything wrong, but to her, it didn't matter because it was just all baggage from that relationship. Mm. and she had to it is know. it is monument i i can't even describe how difficult it is to get out yes. like it, you get to a point where you think it's i'm gonna die right 
I'm going to die. I'm either going to die at his hands or I'm going to kill myself because I can't, this can't go, this can't continue any longer. And, um, yeah, it's, it, I think I had 1% left and I used that 1% to call the police. That was all I had. And it took a while to recover. I mean, I had, I called a friend who's a therapist in another state and said, okay, you said if I needed you, you'd come. She goes, I'm going to, I'm going to fly you out here instead. Yeah. And so I stayed out there for about 11 days before I could come back and like file a more permanent restraining order. And I needed help. I mean, I couldn't, I, I couldn't walk without shaking into the courthouse. I needed, I needed yeah. my friends around me and that boy, did they step up? Boy, were they there. That's awesome. They supported me. They took care of me. They took me in, it, even though I had a perfectly good home here to go to, too afraid to come. Right. Too afraid. You know, it's just, it's, it's shocking. And so now because of that experience, I can really see the nuance of how people manipulate other people. I can see where uh, the seeds of abuse and how they start and where they, where they blossom to. And it's really interesting to watch that take place at mass scale yeah. right now in our world. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's in society. I mean, well, that's the whole thing, right? Like all these people that are vibrating down here are just wanting the abuse, craving mm -hmm. it, attracting it. Again, it's vibratory. It's vibratory. It's, yeah. People don't understand, you know, I always say this, they, they focus on what they don't want instead right. of focusing on how do I create the That's, world and the life that I really do. Well, focusing on what you don't want is exactly how you get it. Exactly. Perfect. Focus. You get what you focus on. But people but you don't know, understand I, that. They're like, why no. can't I be like so-and-so? Why can't, you know, my sister or my husband's brother or whatever, you know, like, why can't I be like them and instead of like becoming who you want to be? Yeah. It's crazy. Well, you know, I would feel bad for them if I didn't know what was on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And because I know what's on the other side of it, I actually feel really, really good for them. Okay, go ahead, get abused. It's all right. You'll be it's fine. A lesson. It's a soul lesson. You'll be fine. And when you come out of it, man, are you going to sprout those wings and fly exactly. and you won't recognize who you are. But everybody who's been through trauma fears that they will somehow slip back to it. And I tell my clients all the time, there's no possible way you can. Right. You know too much now. Right. No That's possible exactly way. Right. That's exactly right. You're exactly the right. The caterpillar can't get shoved. I mean, the, the butterfly can't go right. back and become a caterpillar again. It's not physically possible. So, That's so it's beautiful. all good. It's so beautiful. I, but I, I do remove myself from getting diving into the pit with them. I, I right. have to stand back and Trapped just go. In a bucket. Yeah. yeah. If you want to come to me and, and talk, we'll talk, but I'm not going to dive down in there and, and well, well, fish you out. To what you just said, and by the way, this is a profound podcast. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I so appreciate Thanks. you talking about these things. Um, and I've never talked about this in my entire life in this way that you and I are talking about. And I'm about to go really me deep. Me neither. Are you okay? To go deeper? Yeah. Okay. So something you just said, which like all the hairs, you know, I, when I'm connected to my higher self, all the hairs on my right arm stand up and the hairs on my back neck. So when people have to understand, and this is really of the outskirts and you and I can, where we are, we can accept this and most people can't, but this is the truth. Every soul comes into this planet, right? Incarnation, whatever, with an agreed upon agreement that they are here living in the way they do for soul growth and evolution and, and maturation and development. So even the people that come here and get abused are really wanting that to learn, to feel that experience so that they can evolve. Like you said, the butterfly emerging from the cocoon. But when you say that Allie to most people, they freak out, you know, I'll give you an example. They'll be like, Oh, so you're saying that a person born with no arms and no hearing and one eye in Calcutta who lives till six, that's, that's okay. And I'm like, uh, as a soul, yeah. yes, it is. Yeah. They wanted that perspective. Exactly. Exactly. That's what they came here for. 100%. 100%. And very few people can accept that, but that's, that's the world that we live in. We all choose as souls what we want. We're evolving as beings. We're not physical, right? right? We're spirit in physical bodies. It's that simple. Right. This is just the meat suit we walk around in. <laughs> exactly. It's a flesh and everybody, cho everybody chose it. My son chose it, his bodily conditions 
Exactly. It's a hit. He's living from a different perspective. Exactly. I don't, I don't feel sorry for him. No, he'll, no. He'll get what he needs to get. Exactly. Any more than anybody should feel sorry for me. Right? He, he also knew, he knew, he knew that though. he was going to be, that he knew that you were going to bond with him in the way that you did, that you were going to attend to his needs. Well, and I think he, I think that we choose who we come to, right? I think we choose our parents. Oh, and yeah. what better, what better mom to choose than somebody who's got, a, yes. you know, a quarter of a century of experience with, you know, personal training and physical therapy and biochemistry and, and loves researching that stuff. I, I became so much more aware of uh, micronutrients and macronutrients and their effect on our neurology, on our brain, just from trying to figure out what was going on with him. And yeah. I was the one that caught the seizures. And he has an extremely rare form of epilepsy. Wow. But the doctor, the neurologist said, most parents miss it. It's, it's so subtle. And it looks like a baby trying to do a sit-up. It's so subtle that, and it's yeah. the only form of epilepsy that causes developmental delay, that there are seven-year-olds that, that were at his level when he was six months old. And they are permanently delayed. They will never catch up because their parents completely missed it. Yeah. So, you know, he gave himself a really good shot. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, well, let's talk about that. Do you have him? I mean, he's only two, but do you, are you already looking at doing ketogenic and stuff like that with him? Oh, I looked into into um, putting him into ketosis and and getting him on a keto diet last year. We have the additional challenge of GERD with him. So if he gets too much fat, he vomits up his entire meal. So I found just the right the right ratio of fat to protein to carb, and um, and I have him like dialed in really really tight on his nutrition. I don't, he's gluten-free, dairy-free, and grain-free with the exception of a little bit of rice here and there, but he gets, I mean, this kid couldn't be healthier. You can't, and I, I'm having trouble like getting him to gain weight. He was in the 0.1 percentile of weight when he was born. And so it's been a daily mission to get him to add weight onto his body, but he's getting there. He's actually really healthy now and, um, so awesome. and really happy. Beautiful. So, and his, he's growing out of his, uh, out of his GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Yeah, I know he GERD. Can, it's beautiful. I, well, I, your viewers the, might not. The listeners <laughs> might not, yeah. And so he's been on medication for that since he was about four weeks old because he couldn't, he was in such pain. He was writhing in pain all the time. And, um, and so, but he's growing out of it because I have titrated down his, his recommended dose of medication to the minimal viable amount that keeps it away so that he can, as he gets bigger, he will just grow himself out of needing that medication. And as he's getting to the point where he can eat table foods and he's, he's almost there, That's awesome. I can, I now can like just chop up some taco meat into a little bit finer, you know, than like right. the normal chunks that we eat right. and feed him that along with some veggies. And so he, he gets like egg yolks and avocado oil and guacamole and That's so awesome. healthiest kid ever. You know, you can't gain weight when you're eating whole <laughs> foods. It's Im practically impossible when there's no sugar, when everything's natural and it's all healthy fats. So he's about 50% fat. Yeah. Do you That's give him any, do you give him any like medium chain triglyceride? I mean, you're giving him uh, palmitic acid with avocado oil and stuff, but are you giving him any of that? I'm giving him a uh, coconut yogurt. Yeah, same thing. There you go. Yep. So I'm Beautiful. putting it in that form. And while it does have some sugars in it, those are the he actually he needs something to try to gain some weight. But right. yes, I've been very careful about the fats that he gets, about the the protein sources, the, you know, how much collagen is in those protein sources and um and the carbohydrates and and all of that and definitely not being on dairy because that caused some major problems for him too he's it, he had some challenges it's obvious from speaking with you and from just being in your presence on this podcast that xander is your greatest gift oh, yeah There's i all three of my kids are tremendous well, I'm sure, but I mean, he, he is, you know, you, ha you have to be so much attentive, I'm, I'm sure. And then both of your other children, though, probably are helping out, right? Like they're probably for right sure. There. Yeah. My teenage daughter is like his second mom. That's awesome. She's like, my baby, my baby. I'm like, well, that's good. Her instincts are incredible. Watching her 
work with him and just know what he needs, she is tuned in. And so he's been a blessing to not only me because I, my game has gone up tremendously as a result of it, right. just my intuition and everything, but theirs as well. Like he is this source of, of pulling everybody together. There's a one thing that my two other kids can agree on is they love their brother. Yeah. And they, so awesome. and they pay attention to him. They are more tuned in when they're around him and me than they are any other time. Ellie Covington, it's really you are pretty cool. one amazing woman. And I am yeah. honored and humbled and privileged and blessed that you were able to join the Jay Campbell podcast today. If somebody Thanks for having watches me. this, of course, uh, it's probably not going to be the only time you're on. Um, if you're I hope not. So humbly honored to come back. Um, if somebody I wants to work with you, if somebody wants to work with you, you know, purchase your software, obviously connect with you in social media, what is the best way they can do that? They can go to my website. They can definitely come and give me, send me DMs on Twitter. I keep my DMs open. Um, if, if you answer, if you DM me with, hi, you're not going to get a response. <laughs> but anybody that comes in with a real thoughtful question where they obviously need, I get interesting DMs. <laughs> I love your uh, website, by the way. I, uh, how do I get back oh. to the picture with you planking? Thank you. Uh, it'll slide. It'll, uh -huh. it'll slide it over there. It'll go. There yeah. It That's an awesome. That picture. one. Thanks. I appreciate it. We no, just revamped the site. I, mean, I'm, I think it's, I'm so proud of it. I've, I've literally never been so proud of anything in my life. Yeah, it's completely awesome. I mean, I'm proud of it as a, you know, long-term internet marketer and stuff. Done, a, done an awesome job. I mean, everything you've done. I mean, again, you're a very powerful woman. It's really weird to like, you know, it's not weird, but it's, 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 uh, it's eerie for me to watch you. you. You remind me so much of my wife and how she completely became this empowered woman. And I'll just, you know, if you're okay, we'll go to like another five or six minutes. But sure. when I met her, I was like you at rock bottom, right? Like I had attempted suicide. Like I was mm -hmm. like gone, right? Kids are gone. Jobs gone. Livelihoods gone. I have uh, charges, felony charges against me. Can't get a job. My career is busted. Mm -hmm. And so when I met her, she was such an empowered person because she was, you know, three years out, right? So she had already rebuilt herself. And so it was like just this profound thing for me to like be around this woman who was just so empowered. I felt like so like beneath her, right? But she, bless her, you know, rebuilt me and encouraged me to become the person that I've now become. And, you know, we've been together now eight years and, you know, off, off, off air, I'll share with you. I, I want to meet you. Like I, I want to like my family to meet your family for sure. We're That'd close. That'd be great. Enough. Yeah, we're very close That'd enough. Be... I think my wife and you will like, Ding. But <laughs> I bet we would, you know, and I, my, my daughters are like perfect babysitters for you. You know, they're 13 and 11 and that they live for little boys. Um, oh. But, but I mean, again, truthfully, like, it's just amazing to see a person as powerful as you are, the presence that you have, you know, to recognize that you were not that person at all times. And, you know, you've right. become this person through the experiences that life has given you you know, and you can look at them obviously as negative at the time as you did and I did at the time, but now we look at them as the greatest gifts. And, you know, obviously Xander and your other children are just such a gift to you. And honestly, yeah. I'm just really grateful that you came on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me to be here. It's an honor of mine to, to be here with you and with such a high vibration. I mean, you are tremendous. And when I saw some of your tweets, I went, I like this guy. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it, but you get it, but you're so um, you're so out there about it. Most people that I've noticed that are of a higher vibration that get it, they're hiding it. They're not transparent. Yeah. They're not transparent. I think they're still afraid of what other people will think of them. Right. And I, I really appreciate how you're just straightforward about it and super honest and transparent. It's really beautiful. And so when I saw, when I saw your tweet, I went, Ah, I like that. I like him. I we vibe on the same wavelength. I gotta, so I started interacting with you. Yep. And bought your face stuff. I like it. Oh, you actually have it. Nice. I really? did. I ordered it. I ordered it because so one of my oh, Johnny Noble body that sells the the skin oil, which yep. I love. Yep. I reached out to him because I really value his opinion. I asked him about the cobalt blue and he said, Oh, it's great stuff, but it's really expensive. He was yep. thinking about putting it in his products. Yep. And I went, well, cool. I'll just use both. Yep. 
And yeah. so this is me with no makeup on. <laughs> but that's who you, but this is who you are. Like, you know, you're not, you're not fake, Allie. You're transparent no. and authentic. You're like me. Again, we have yep. the same energy. And, you know, to what you said, uh, a lot of the influencers, um, you know, in my networks and stuff like that are like, they love me, right? Because they wish they could actually go out to their audiences and do what I do, right? I mean, most people will never say the shit that I will say, right? Just as right. You, people like you would never express and bear everything like you just did on this podcast. So, I mean, I have a profound love and respect for you as a being, as a spiritual being, mm -hmm. much more so than most of the people that have ever come on this podcast. Because again, you are so courageous. And, and again, you're, it's not that you're courageous, you're just being who you really are. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. You know what I mean? When you have kids, I thought to myself, if, if I kill myself, I'm going to ruin right. yeah. the lives of my other two kids. I right. can't do that. That's beautiful. So I'll stick it out. So they got me through it. They got me through all of it. And there's grief when you have a child that has epilepsy and they're forced some special needs as a result of it. Right. Because, you know, when you have, when you get pregnant, you think this is what my kid's going to be like. Sure. And he's not like them, but right. talk about a blessing. He doesn't need to be, and I don't need him to be. All, all children that are born with special needs are pure love. They really yeah. are. They're, they're, they're the greatest gift. I mean, I've been around so many autistic you know, mentally retarded, um, you know, just, they're, they're just pure God source energy. They, they don't know harm or negativity or fear. They're just literally cosmic white beings. Like every they're time beautiful. I'm a mentally disabled child, I stop and I talk to them, you know, I ask them questions. I ask if I can help, you know, not, not, not to be, you know, like I'm condescending or anything, but literally because they genuinely interest me because I realize I'm around an angelic being. Like I'm, that's the closest to being around an angelic being as you could possibly be in human's form. As, as you say, they, they don't calculate harm. No, no, no. It's they're just so not beautiful. part of, of their circuitry. And it's so beautiful to see that. And, and as a result, they make everybody around them more beautiful yeah. and you know, non-calculating too. You, you, yeah, you would pretty good. much have to be like a demonic reptilian being with no empathy if you do not find joy in being around development, developmentally disabled people. They are a gift. I mean, like I said, they're like, yeah. it's, they really are a divine aspect of nature. Yeah, they're the best parts of us. Totally. Allery, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. Thank you, Jay. It's you're been my pleasure. You're a beautiful being. Um, you guys, please, oh, like you. everyone that comes on the Jay Campbell podcast, please support the amazing people like Allie Covington. Visit her website. It is bodcompany.com. Consider personal training with her. Consider working with her. And if you're a bigger player and you want to actually talk to her about selling, I mean, buying her software might be a good idea. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize <laughs> your love creation. We will see you guys very soon. <laughs>